Now let's look at the multiplexing stage in the efficient spatial coding. It is the third stage in the process. After the Fourier transform for the decorrelation stage K0, transforming spatial pixels to their Fourier components. And then after the gain control stage G, giving GK to each Fourier component, we will show that this multiplexing stage is this matrix U, that is the inverse Fourier transform, K0 inverse. Remember that we have learned that this U transform could take many, in fact, infinitely many choices of what it could be as long as it's unitary. So let's see what if we don't take this inverse Fourier transform, but make it just a identity matrix. That means the last stage we do nothing. Yeah. And so therefore this K will just be the decorrelation and gain control. And it will take this form, yeah? Fourier transform, gain control, taking the original image, this is the original huge image, into these output um, form, which are all Fourier components amplified or scaled by their individual gain factor. So what does that mean? Imagine, you know, we have this output neuron 1, output neuron 2, all the way to output neuron n. So for the first neuron, it will have input coming from each of these pixels. So that means it depends on each of these pixels as a weighted sum of these pixels. Yeah. So that means this output depends on them via an input connection. You, you have to build an input connection to build its recessive film form. And this recessive film, uh, recessive field, yeah, recessive field has this form which is like a Fourier wave with this particular frequency, and then scale by this gain. Okay, it's a huge recessive field, as big as the original image. Well, so is the second node, another huge recessive field, covering the whole image, and has a different recessive field form shape by a different Fourier wave. And so on, third node and fourth node, all of these nodes, each of them is a neuron, has a residue field as big as the original image, and their residue field form shapes are unique and have different unique amplitude. These are really, really expensive residue field to build okay, because they're very huge. And they're not what we see, for example, in monkey's retina. This means if we take these form of multiplexing U matrix, it's not a good choice. Here is just an example of this, uh, you know, when you equal to one, you have this first node will be this weighted sum I'm coming from this first row with the first gain factor. So it's a weighted sum of these image pixels here. It's a huge residual field summing over all pixels. Yeah. If we do take this U matrix as the inverse Fourier transform, however, we make the gain control equal to one, its identity, so that each of these gains are one. So this is just equal to that. That means there's no gain control. Yeah. And then in this case, this K will just be the Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform. So do something and do its inverse. That means you just do nothing. So what it means is the output vector here is just equal to the input vector. Okay, that means this element equal to that element and this element equal to that element. That means each of these output uh, node has a small rest of field and only depends on one corresponding input pixel. Here, for simplicity, we're ignoring the noise, yeah? In fact, of course, we also have output. It includes a signal and noise. Now, if we take a general G, okay, and with the U matrix as the inverse Fourier transform, then this K matrix becomes this form, okay? And now, using this K matrix onto the original transforming the original image, giving you the output. And this is how it looks like. Original image, this is the whole K matrix to the output. 
and it's composed of this matrix is the Fourier transform as we have learned and this is the gain control yeah with a diagonal uh, elements only uh, non-zero and each gain for each Fourier component and inverse Fourier transform is this matrix and it's inverse of this matrix you can see they are related yeah because Fourier transform is a unitary matrix so it's really this way yeah so this is a row vector it becomes a column vector but with every element become complex conjugate that means this negative sign is taken away second row vector becomes the second column vector with negative taken away so basically this matrix is a transpose of this matrix turn around okay and taking all the complex conjugate and this is the whole transform and we have uh, just know that if this is an identity matrix that means each gain is equal to one then this whole transform is uh, identity map mapping with each output element only depend on one input pixel so the rest of the field is really small one pixel now with not with this not all gain equal to one then it will not be exactly so small a rest of field but slightly bigger okay it is actually a band pass version of the input just like this output is not exactly like an input but it's a band pass version and let's look in detail next so let's see o equal to kx and this k is just a multiplication of these three matrices so let's write each element out k xi xj because on the left is xi on the right is xj so each of this element xi xj it's like that this term is u xi kl this term is g kl km and this term is km uh, xj's element yeah and summing over kl which is linking these two together km is linking these two together now noticing that this is a diagonal matrix the non-zero term is only diagonal when kl equal to km and let's just call it k so you just sum over k gk gkk it's this one so everything is just k yeah now plugging this element from there and this element from there you write it out sum over k still sum over k and gk is not gk like that and this and that because this is the complex conjugate of that it's positive exponential negative exponential you can pause the video here just to go over this yourself slowly if you need however now after you finish you notice that this depends only on the difference between xi and xj so therefore this element only depends on this difference now put this inside and you see xi k summing over xj is like that and this only depends on the difference between xi and xj so let's write it out and because it only depends on xi and xj i'm going to write this as a filter here okay just copy it down it depends only on the difference between x and xj it's a convolution of the spatial input now which i write here as if it's a function it is it is a function of x yeah so i'm just calling this x prime so xj is become x prime and x is for all of x it's just like that so therefore the output function over here is the convolution spatial convolution of the input image function and so this is a spatial filter the convolution filter in that form now let's have a look at how this filter should look like now it's built from all these uh, spatial waves with amplitude gk adding all these waves together of different different frequency k now recall that this gk as a function of k goes like this okay small amplitude for small frequency and large frequency but peaks at some intermediate frequency 
So adding these waves together, when xi equal to xj, this phase is zero. So all these waves should just superpose onto each other. However, when xi not equal to xj, which is also means when x not equal to x prime, all these waves at different phases for different k's will cancel each other. So you can imagine this is how the resistive field should look like of this filter. Yeah, uh, when x equal to x prime, now x minus x prime is now written as x. Yeah, and so therefore when x is zero, it peaks. That's where all the waves add together. When x is now zero, it quickly drops to zero, but also goes to some inhibitory phase. So this is a center surround resistive field with a spatial extent connected with how um, where this peak frequency kp is yeah and so in fact the size of the resistive field is the order of one over kp this is connected to uncertainty principle some of you probably have heard about that yeah and so this resistive field is center surround resistive field not as big as a whole Fourier wave but bigger than a single pixel Therefore, combining these three stages, decorrelation by Fourier transform, gain control, which is the band pass filter, and multiplexing, which is the inverse Fourier transform, we have a spatial resistive field yeah, that's used to filter this input to this output. Yeah. And uh, um, you notice there's some noise in this input. With this filter, the noise is filtered out, but it's also amplifying certain spatial contrast, which is the spatial edges. Yeah, you notice this is in excitatory in the middle and inhibitory uh, in the side. So it's a center surround receptive field coming for, from the bandpass nature of this filter. So also know that this resistive field has the same shape, okay, because it only depends on x minus x prime for each output O. So for different output units, the same shape just shifted center location according to where the output unit is. So therefore, this multiplexing matrix taking the inverse Fourier transform really is a very good choice. It's a small residue field, not too big like a whole Fourier wave, not too small, um, like a single pixel. Yeah, it amplifies the spatial contrast and it's the same residue field for all different output nodes, just spatially translated from each other. A very good multiplexing function. Easier to implement, for instance, to build hardware when all these residue fields have the same shape of center surround, just shifted.